You are the subject of our trivia question here. So you're one of only three players ever to win the Bena the uh, the two awards here. It, it's the um, Benaric. The, the Benaric and the Thorpe. Do you know who the other two were? Uh, it's uh, Charles Woodson oh. and Patrick Peterson. That is correct. He had it. Yeah. Exactly right. He had it exactly right. How about that? All right, so what we wanted to do was something a little bit different. So we have Damian Woody here who played like 600 years in the NFL. <laughs> so I want you two guys, you, you do this. I'm going to sit back and enjoy it. You guys, mm -hmm. do you would take him through some film yeah. and let's see what it is we can learn. Yeah, listen, I mean, cause I love studying Alabama film because a lot of the concepts that you guys do correlates to the National, National Football League. And we're going to break down a couple plays from this past season, mm -hmm. you know, starting with this play right here. You're in the slot right here. Just talk me through what what are you what are you reading right here? Because in a slot, I mean, that guy has a two-way go. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, we're playing just regular man pressure, uh, I believe, in this play. So I knew the ball's gonna be coming out quick. Started off inside disguising, uh, trying to, cause you know when the, when the, uh, when you're inside, uh, quarterback's trying to read you, see what you're doing. So I had to snap, I jump outside and just play regular man. Say, yeah, it looked like you just ran, man. you ran the route yeah, for the receiver up, right man. here. After that, just cover the man. When the ball's in the air, you can come to the receiver. Absolutely, absolutely. Again, you know, like I said, in the slot, I mean, that's one of the toughest positions that you can play in the National Football League, again, because a lot of, a lot of these guys have a two-way go. Exactly. And, it, and Nick Saban does an absolutely great job of teaching you guys how to pattern read those Can I ask things. one question about that? Oh, we'll go to the next play then, again, and then I'll ask you. Go ahead. Now, now this play right here, this, uh, this is one of the toughest plays in the National Football League because it's one of those back shoulder fades down in the uh, down the red zone. This is something you're gonna see a lot uh, in, at the next level. Talk to me. Talk to me about how how you adjust on, on these type of throws because they're really hard to yeah, defend. It's real hard because you, you you have to make decisions whether to turn and look for the ball or right. whether to just play through his hands. So it all depends on who you're playing. Like it's a, a big receiver. Uh, so I just chose to try and play through his hands, and I could just play play the ball strong, a little bit stronger, uh, more aggressive. Uh, he just went up and got it, made a great play. Yeah, and, and the one thing I noticed right here, the ball is on the far hash. So in your mind, do you know you're covering out here that, yes, that yeah. that's where the ball is yeah, going right there? Either thing you're running, you're going to run two things, either slant or fade. Right. There. Uh, and you know they, they're going to try and do that. They're going to target you down there. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It almost seems like an unfair play, candidly. I mean, there's almost, it looks to me from where I'm sitting, like there's almost nothing you can do. Go ahead. Yeah, and then the one, I think the, one of the biggest things that I love about you, number one, versatility, but your ability to tackle. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things, a lot of teams like to force, force runs out to the corners because they don't think cornerbacks can really tackle. Yeah. But that's one of the things that you, that you do well. But on this play right here, Talk about what you're seeing. You're right here. You're in the you're in the, the slot, exactly. but you let the receiver, you let the, the slot receiver go, mm -hmm. and you fall right back yeah. into the so, pad. And talk me through that one. So watching film in this formation uh, when we were playing Arkansas, one of their top plays was a, either a Houston or a Texas route. It's a dig from number two, right. and uh, number one was a post route, and they could try to isolate the corner one on one. Uh, and so uh, once once my guy broke on the dig, I knew that they was gonna have a post sitting right behind me, trying to uh, go one on one with the corner. Uh, so I just dropped it uh, to the linebackers, sat in the window, and just made a play. That's the most interesting part to me, and that was going to be my question on the first one, is how much of that comes from film study. When you're running the rod for the receiver, I have to believe that's not something that you did on Saturday. That's something you did on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and all the Ds yeah. leading up to that because you know what he's going to do based on tendencies yeah, yeah, so you always, You're always trying to have an idea of what he's going to do before beforehand with the split, what, what he's doing, on, if he's on the ball, off the ball, even body language sometimes could give away uh, a route. Uh, so you just want to try and put yourself in, in a better position because you're playing a real hard position. Uh, so you just got to do whatever you can to, to help you out. And the one thing, I, one thing I love about Nick Saban, Nick Saban's background is defensive backs. Mm -hmm. So just talk to me how he prepares you guys because it seems like you see a bunch of Alabama defensive backs going to the National Football League. Mm -hmm. How does he prepare you guys for the next level? Yeah, he, he's real hands-on every day. He teaches us uh, about the real small things that a lot of people just don't pay attention to that that uh, they might not think are important. He really uh, express, expresses them and uh, makes sure we know that, that, that they're really important. Uh, he also, he, he's, uh, he's hard on us, but yeah. it's, it's for a reason. He knows how great we could be, and I uh, love him. I appreciate everything that he's taught us. Is, yeah. there, is there a guy that in the National Football League that you pattern your game after? Um, it's kind of hard to do that because I play multiple positions, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I try and take a little bit uh, from, the, from the best at each. So you got like Eric Berry, Cam, uh, Cam Chester, Earl Thomas, and that corner and cover skills, uh, Patrick Peterson, Malcolm Butler, mm -hmm. all those guys. So I try and take a little bit away from, uh, from each of the top guys and just learn from them. Those are good guys. Uh, so I want to go back to Saban for a minute here because you had a really interesting quote. You guys won the national championship. 
But last year, you were talking about your teammates, and you mentioned at one point, and the quote was sort of, a, in some ways, almost seemed amusing because you said guys aren't wearing the right socks mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. <laughs> but really what you were talking about was attention to it's detail. Yeah. How much of that comes from the coach, and how much of that comes from the team leaders? There it was. There were small things like people coming late to meetings, we're not wearing the right socks. Sounds crazy, but it builds up in the end. Yeah. I think I understand <laughs> what you were trying to get yeah, at yeah. there, which is attention to detail. How much of that can come from the coaches and how much of that has to come from the leaders on the team? I mean, it, it starts with the coaches, but it ends with the with the players on the team. I mean, the coach could, could say all he wants to pay attention to detail, but it's up to the players and the leaders to, to do that because players are going to listen to players, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, you know, when it comes to the coaches, uh, they can only do so much. So once the, once the top guy on the team is, and do, is doing what he's supposed to be doing and people see him having success and uh, doing it the right way, then everybody else is going to do it the right way and vice versa. I need your help with one other thing. So I've heard a rumor about you, and that is that once you made Nick Saban laugh. And I've interviewed <laughs> Nick Saban. I've interviewed Nick Saban 200 times, mm -hmm. and I've never been able to make him laugh. Do you yeah. remember how you made him laugh? I make him laugh all the time. Okay, just, tell me how. I just go to him, mess with him. You know, just... It's, uh, you mess with Nick Saban. Yeah. And he, yeah. That, he likes that? Yeah. I mean, he, he likes Lighthearted joshing, that works yeah. with him? Exactly, yeah. G give me one fun. example. Like, uh, you just got to go to him, just, just uh, try, try and make him laugh. Just say something silly to him. And he'll, I mean, you got to know what, what mood he's in. You can't, you can't uh, just say it any time. <laughs> but uh, if you're having a good practice, just go up to him and just uh, go up to him with a smile, approach him, say something funny to him, and he'll, he'll receive it. I got to ask you one more thing quickly. They're, they're rushing me. But... It's halftime of the national championship game, and you look up, and your team just changed quarterbacks mm -hmm. to a guy who had barely played all season long. Yeah. We all saw how it ended up, but what was the first thought that you had when you saw it? Um, I was confident too, man. He, he's a great player, uh, really poised and really uh, mature for his age. So I had ultimate confidence in him, and uh, you know, we was, gonna, we was all just thinking about doing our job, what we could do to win the game. All right, we got to find some way to get this guy in the Jets, Dwood. I mean, there's got to be a way. The Jets can take a quarterback at three. But you couldn't do any better than taking Minf uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, who will hear his name called early the first night of the draft.